An article by Chris Hedges, Resist or Become Surfs. It's posted on truthdig.com, uh, April 6, 2009. So over three years ago, Chris Hedges. So here we go. America is devolving into a third world nation. If we do not immediately halt our elite's rapacious looting of the public treasury, we will be left with trillions in debt which can never be repaid, and widespread human misery, which we will be helpless to ameliorate. Our anemic democracy will be replaced by a robust national police state. The elite will withdraw into heavily guarded gated communities where they will have access to security goods and services that cannot be afforded by the rest of us. Tens of millions of people, brutally controlled, will live in perpetual poverty. This is the inevitable result of unchecked corporate capitalism. The stimulus and bailout plans are not about saving us, they're about saving them. We can resist, which means street protest, disruptions of the system, and demonstrations, or become serfs. So, resist or become serfs. We can resist street protest, disruptions of the system, and demonstrations, or become serfs. We've been in a steady economic decline for decades. The Canadian political philosopher... John Ralston saw detailed this decline in his 1992 book, Voltaire's Bastards, The Dictatorship of Reason in the West. David K. Johnson exposed the mirage and rot of American capitalism and free lunch, how the wealthiest Americans enrich themselves at government expense and stick you with the bill. And David C. Corton, and when corporations rule the world, an agenda for... The new economy laid out corporate malfeasance and abuse, but our universities and mass media. So it's the universities and the mass media who are entranced by power and they're na naively believing that global capitalism was an unstoppable force of nature, rarely asked the right questions or gave a prominent voice of those who did. Our elite hid their incompetence and loss of control behind an arrogant facade of specialized jargon and obscure economic theories. The lies employed to camouflage the economic decline are legion. President Ronald Reagan included 1.5 million U.S. Army, Navy, Air Force, and Marine Service personnel with a civilian workforce to magically reduce the nation's unemployment rate by 2%. President Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton decided that those who had given up looking for work or those who wanted full-time jobs but could only find part-time employment were no longer to be counted as unemployed. This trick disappeared some 5 million unemployed from the official unemployment rolls. If you work more than 21 hours a week, most low-wage workers at places like Walmart average 28 hours a week. You are counted as employed, although your real, real wages put you below the poverty line. Our actual unemployment rate, when you include those who have stopped looking for work and those who can only find part-time jobs, is not 8.5%, but 15%. 25% is Great Depression level, so 15%. Uh, six of the country is now effectively unemployed, and we're shedding jobs at a faster rate than the, in the months after the 1929 crash. The consumer price index used by the government to measure inflation is meaningless. To keep the official inflation figures low, the government has been substituting basic products at once measured to check for inflation with ones that do not rise very much in price. This sleight of hand has kept the cost of living increases tied to the CPI artificially low. The New York Times consumer reporter W.P. Dunleavy wrote that her groceries now cost $587 a month, up from $400 a year earlier. This is a 40% increase. California economist John Williams, who runs an organization called Shadow Statistics, contends that if Washington still used the CPI measurements applied back in the 1970s, Inflation would be at 10%. The corporate state and the political and intellectual class that serve the corporate state constructed a financial and political system based on illusions. Corporations engaged in a pyramid lending that created fictitious assets. Engaged in pyramiding lending created fictitious assets. These fictitious assets became collateral for more bank lending. The elite skimmed off hundreds of millions in bonuses, commissions, and salaries from this fictitious wealth. Politicians who dutifully served corporate interests rather than those of citizens were showered with campaign contributions and given lucrative jobs when they left office. Universities, knowing it was not good business to challenge corporatism, muted any voices of conscience while they went begging for corporate donations and grants. Deceptive 
Deceptive loans and credit card debt fueled the binges of a consumer society and hid falling wages and the loss of manufacturing jobs. The Obama administration, rather than chart a new course, is intent on re-inflating the bubble. The trillions of dollars of government funds being spent to sustain these corrupt corporations could have renovated our economy. We could have saved tens of millions of Americans from poverty. The government could have, as consumer activist Ralph Nader has pointed out, started two new banks. So we could have started ten new banks. America could have ten brand new banks with $35 billion each and a 10 to 1 leverage to open credit markets. Vast, unimaginable sums are being placed into these dirty corporate hands without oversight. And they will use this money as they always have to enrich themselves at our expense. You're going to see the biggest waste, fraud, and abuse in American history, Nader warned when I asked about the bailouts. Not only is it wrongly directed, not only does it deal with the perpetrators instead of the people who were victimized, but they don't have a delivery system of any honesty and efficiency. The Justice Department is overwhelmed. It doesn't have a tenth of the prosecutors, the investigators, the auditors, the attorneys needed to deal with the previous corporate crime wave before the bailout started last September. It is especially unable to deal with the rapacious ravaging of this new money by these corporate recipients. You can see it already. The corporations haven't lent it. They've used some of it for acquisitions or to preserve their bonuses or their dividends. As long as they know that they are not going to jail, they don't see many newspaper reports about their colleagues going to jail, then they don't care. It's total impunity. If they quit, they quit with a golden parachute. Even General Motors CEO Rick Wagoner has taken away $21 million. There are a handful of former executives who have conceded that the bailouts are a waste. American International Group Incorporated former chairman Maurice R. Greenberg told the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee on Thursday that the effort to prop up the firm with $170 billion has failed. He said the company should be restructured. AIG, he said, would have better, been better off filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection instead of seeking government help. AIG should have filed for bankruptcy. We should not have bailed AIG out. $700 billion, $800 billion, some crazy-ass number. Um, these are signs of hyper-decay. Nader said from his office in Washington, you spend this kind of money and do not know if it will work. Bankrupt corporate capitalism is on its way to bankrupting the socialism that is trying to save it. <laughs> so bankrupt corporate capitalism is on its way to bankrupting the socialism that's trying to save it. So capitalism almost destroyed the safety net, which is now they are using it in order to save capitalism. Bush, W. Bush, George W. Bush said the same thing. So uh, bankrupt corporate capitalism. So that is the end stage. If they no longer have socialism to save them, then we're into feudalism. So if there is no socialism to save the rich, then it's just feudalism. So there is no state capitalism. It's just anarchy and Feudalism will dwell into us being the serfs and they the uh, the landlords. So they no longer have socialism to save them. We're into feudalism. We are into private police, gated communities, and serfs with a 21st century nomenclature. We would not be able to raise another three or four trillion dollars, especially with our commitments now totaling some 12 trillion. Dollars to fix the mess. It was only a couple months ago that our expenditures totaled nine trillion. It was not long ago that such profl profligate government spending was unthinkable. It's Fifteen trillion now. That's our deficit. Fifteen trillion. There's an eight hundred billion dollar limit placed on the Federal Reserve a year ago. The economic stimulus and the bailouts will not bring back our casino capitalism and as the meltdown shows no signs of abating and the bailouts show no sign of working the recklessness and desperation of our capitalist overlords have increased the cost to the working and middle class is becoming unsustainable the fed reported in march that households lost 5.1 trillion dollars or nine percent of their wealth in the last three months of 2008 the most ever in a single quarter in the 57 year history of record keeping by the central bank for the full year, household wealth dropped $11.1 trillion, or about 18%. These figures did not record the decline of investments in the stock market, which uh, has probably eased trillions more in the country's collective net worth. The bullet to our head, inevitable if we do not radically alter course, will be sudden. We have been borrowing at the rate of more than $2 billion a day over the last 10 years, and at some point, it's got to stop. The moment China... The oil-rich states 
and other international investors stop buying treasury bonds, the dollar will become junk. Already, China and Russia, they're not using the dollar to trade anymore. The world is going away from the dollar. We're becoming poorer and poorer every day. Euro's rising. Canadian dollar at one point was worth more than the dollar, and the dollar is sinking. If these groups, so as soon as China and the oil-rich states and other international investors stop buying treasury bonds, the dollar will become junk. So as soon as the treasury bonds... Uh, that are being paid for by China, oil-rich nations, and other international investors quit paying for it. And, uh, our economy will be will be nothing. It will be sunk because we're still on the dollar. Um, the dollar might be worth something to us, but internationally the dollar will uh, drop and be meaningless. Inflation will rocket upward. We will become Weimar Germany. A furious and sustained backlash by a betrayed and angry populace, one unprepared intellectually and psychologically for collapse, will sweep aside the Democrats and most of the Republicans. A cabal of proto-fascist misfits, from Christian demagogues to simpletons like Sarah Palin to loudmouth talk show hosts, who we naively dismiss as buffoons, will find a following with promises of revenge and moral renewal. The elites, the ones with their Harvard Business School degrees and expensive vocabularies, will retreat into their shelter enclaves of privilege and comfort. We will be left bereft and abandoned outside the gates. So, Resist or Become Serfs by Chris Hedges. Occupy. Viva la Revolucion. 